Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Castle Itter, the strangest battle of World War II. This is a game designed by David Thompson and published by Dan Verson Games. If you're not familiar with the story of Castle Itter, I definitely recommend checking it out on the internet. There's plenty of information you can read about it, and there are some documentaries on YouTube that really will shine a big light on this unique situation where U.S. and German forces worked together, fought side by side against other German forces, SS forces in this case, but uh, makes for a very interesting and gripping story. If you have played Pavlov's House, this is going to be a very familiar type of game because Pavlov's House, although it gives you the operational, strategic, and tactical level, this gives you just the tactical level, so it's a little bit smaller, easier to manage than Pavlov's House is, and brings a very interesting narrative to the table when you're playing. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. The battle for Castle Itter was fought near the Austrian village of Itter on 5 May 1945, in the last days of the war in Europe during World War II. U.S. soldiers joined forces with Wehrmacht infantrymen, an SS officer, an Austrian resistance fighter, and recently freed French prisoners of war to defend an Austrian castle against an attacking force from the 17th SS Panzer Grenadier Division. During a game of Castle Litter, you take on the role of the force that defended the castle from 0400 to 1600 on 5 May 1945. The goal of the game is to last until the SS deck is depleted without allowing SS counters to reach the castle. You score points for each defender that survives the assault and lose points for each SS counter remaining on the board at the end of the game. The higher your score, the better. This is a solitaire game. You take control of the defenders of Castle Litter. There is also a two-player competitive variant where one player controls the defenders of Castle Litter while the other player controls the SS attacker. Game components, it comes with 95 cards, 77 wooden blocks, four sheets of counters, five dice, three reference sheets, a 33 by 17 inch mounted tactical display, and a rule book. It is for one to two players, 45 to 60 minutes, and it is a moderate complexity. And here is an example of the board and some of the counters and cards that you'll find inside the game. So let's take a look inside the box and see what you get. And we get our rule book, our map board, counter sheets, player aid cards, two decks of cards, our dice, and a bunch of wood blocks. So let's set up the map, take a closer look at the game. And here's a look at the map that comes with Castle Litter. If you've played Pavlov's House, it's going to look very familiar to you because this is the same type of layout as what you see in the tactical map for Pavlov's House. If you've not played Pavlov's House and played any State of Siege game, it's also going to look very familiar because it uses the same track progression format to advance forces towards the castle to attack you. So uh, it should feel very familiar once you lay it out on the table. Everything's color coded. You have purple, red, green, and yellow tracks and associated colors matching that inside the castle. They serve a line of sight purpose. So anything in purple can shoot at anything up the purple track. Anything in red can shoot anything on the red track, so on and so forth. When you see the ones that have both colors, like here, the purple and red, or the green and red, this means that you have line of sight to both tracks. So that's going to be real important when you're laying out your forces and you want to be able to cover more sectors. You're going to make sure that you have that covered because then you can shoot at both advancing tracks. Then we have the suppression track and two important locations in the defensive castle litter. The gatehouse, which have, has a machine gun, and the Basat and Jenny, which is a Sherman tank that has a 76 millimeter cannon and two machine guns. Beware, though, that when you have forces in that tank, which you're going to want to do, you want to have that big firepower to help support the castle. Whenever that tank gets destroyed, you're going to lose any of the crew that's in it. So just keep that in mind. Now we'll take a look at the play raids that come with the game. This is a list of defender actions. It also gives you the page that explains what each of these actions does in the rulebook, so you can easily reference it if you need a further explanation of the rule. The next sheet gives us the defender attributes, lists out all the attributes and the information about that, as well as the rulebook page in case you need to reference the rule. And the last sheet explains how to use the cards in the game, along with a reference to the rules in the rulebook. Now we'll take a look at a couple of the cards in the game. This is from the SS deck. This is what you will draw from to advance and place different enemy units on the board. This is a mortar unit. This is the suppression value, and this is the defense value on the bottom. This is also the deck that it will be in. And the reinforcement card is a card you're definitely going to want to see because that will mean you get extra forces to help defend the castle. And lastly, the card you're going to want to see the most, this is the end game card. And when this shows up, 
the game ends immediately. And the card to keep a special eye out for is this one. This is for the competitive use only. So if you're going to be playing opposed, then you'll use this card. Otherwise, this will not be used when you're playing solitaire. Now we'll take a look at the counter sheets that come with the game. If you played Pavlov's house, it's the same type of layout. If you've not, uh, are very easy to read. Nice thick counters as we've come to expect from DVG. You have your admin tokens up here and then your German attacking forces on the bottom. Some more admin tokens up top and more German forces on the bottom of the second sheet. Same on the third sheet, but now we're getting into the defenders here at the bottom. And the final counter sheet gives us the rest of the defenders of Castle Litter. Now we'll take a look at the rulebook. It is a 24 page full color rulebook. Lots of big text, lots of images, lots of illustrated examples. That's why it is a 24 page rulebook. You start with the introduction, we get it to the setup illustration, setup and components, breaks down all the components and how to read those. Counters and cards, it explains to you how to read those. Then we get into playing the game on page four. Game overview, game board, line of sight, which we already talked about when we looked at the map and we talked about the different colors and how the advancing units up the tracks are seen by the corresponding color. Then we start with the defender phase and all of the actions that are available to you as the player in the defender phase. You have a special rule for initial actions. Then you have the attack, a couple of illustrated examples of play on those pages. Suppress, move within a location, which is a free action. Move to a new location. Again, more illustrated examples of play. Then we have recover and a command special action along with the corresponding illustrated examples of play. The escape special action. And we get into the defender phase attributes, which we saw on the card. It's also here in the rulebook. As I said before on the card, it points to this page in the rulebook. So using the player aids saves you from having to hit the rulebook, but you can always use it if you need it. Then we get to the SS cards, attack defenders, attack location, destroying the Basat and Jenny, along with a couple of illustrated examples. Then we get to the SS cards where you place your SS counters, roll to determine the counter placement, decide whether you want to attempt to suppress the counter and advance any SS counters if applicable with an example of play over here. And it's important when you're trying to defend Castle Litter to make sure you have good suppression around the different locations uh, up the advancement tracks because what happens is when the counter is going to be placed, if you have suppression counters already in that spot where it's going to be placed, you can attempt to roll dice to suppress and not allow that unit to be placed there. So just look at it as if they're going to be moving up this path towards the back of the castle. If you have a machine gun emplacement there and you're laying down suppressive fire, they're not going to move into that spot. So it's going to be easier for you to keep them back and not let them advance up the track. We continue on with machine gunner and mortar, illustrated example play, disrupting defenders, which we just talked about with the gameplay example there. And we get to the suppressive fire disrupt defenders card, which is the final card that is explained in the rule book and the example of play there, as well as the ending the game and how you win. You win if you score one or higher, you draw if you score zero or lower, you lose immediately if at any time during the game an SS counter advances beyond the end of its track and into the castle. Then you have a score table here to give you uh, an idea of how well you did. If you scored zero or less, there's nothing. One to nine is a bronze star. 10 to 19 is a silver star. 20 to 29 is distinguished service cross. 30 to 39 is a medal of honor and 40 plus is the Austrian national hero and that's an epic victory. Then we have a couple of variants for increasing difficulty, veteran difficulty, and elite difficulty. If you really think that you've got this game down pat and it's really not a challenge, well guess what? You can really crank it up to 11 and make it tougher on yourself. Then we get to the competitive two-player variant and the SS planning phase, which is a new phase in the competitive variant. And then there are some sources used for the design of the game and then some scenarios for other games dealing with Castle Litter. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Castle Later, The Strangest Battle of World War II, a game designed by David Thompson and published by Dan Versen Games. Leave it to David Thompson to find some really odd, unique subjects to cover. Pavlov's House is not a unique subject, but he really came up with a, a unique way of, of showing the desperate fight in Stalingrad at Pavlov's House and how important that was to the defense of Stalingrad by giving you operation strategic level as well as the tactical level. So you got to wear multiple hats, you get to see the big picture, all the way down to the urgent fight here at the tactical level. This is all about the urgent fight at tactical level, the fight to survive, and I really like the way he does it. It makes it simple, easy to play, but still very challenging and very tactical. It's not, don't, don't look at it and say, oh, this is just like a state of siege game, it's easy. No, it isn't. It's going to kick your ass. <laughs> Pavlov's house kicks your ass, and it's a love-hate relationship with that game. You love it because it's a great design, and it's fun to play, but you hate it because it 
just kicks your ass all the time and it gets frustrating, but in a good way. And that is the mark of a great design. And I think you're going to find both of these games, Castle Litter and Pavlov's House, will have that same feel for you as well. And it is uh, not a high complexity game. So it's a very simple game to understand. So non-war gamers can get into this. And this is a great way to introduce a friend of yours to playing war games because you can actually play cooperatively by just kind of dividing your forces or walk through maybe your son or your daughter that wants to play these games. You can sit down and walk them through how to play it and help them out with some decision making if they're young kids. But easy enough to play and they'll have a blast with it. And this is what we need to do is uh, start training up those youngsters and get them into the war game stable. But definitely check out Castle Litter and Pavlov's House. If you've not played at Pavlov's House, fantastic game. Castle Litter, this looks to be just as good as Pavlov's House. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've been curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.